been at least two years since the Occupy Wall Street protests started back in Zuccotti Park, and even less time since those protests were shut down by the NYPD. Now, last week marked the high-profile case of Cecily McMillan, a protester charged and now convicted of assaulting police officer Brantley Bavell. Now, the officer claimed that McMillan deliberately elbowed her in the eye while escorting her out of the park on the night of May 25, 2012. So what happened? According to Assistant District Attorney Aaron Choi, Bavell was walking behind Ms. McMillan with his hand on her shoulder. McMillan then allegedly asked some of the people around her the question of, are you filming this? Then allegedly crouched down, bent her knees, aimed her elbow at the officer, and then jumped up to strike. Now there is some grainy police video that shows that McMillan had indeed elbowed the officer, and photographs showed that Bavell suffered a black eye. And now, of course, he claims to experience headaches and sensitivity to light due to his injury. But that's not the whole story. McMillan claims that she elbowed the officer as a reflex, as a reflex to the officer allegedly grabbing her breast. And there is a picture to prove it. Well, let's look at that right now. So as you can see, that... Uh, there, there is a bruise on this picture from Democracy Now! of uh, Cecily's, uh, of Cecily, and her injury um, sustained from, supposedly sustained from Officer Bavell. Uh, McMillan was also reported to have had a seizure in the second, in a second video after the incident took place. Now, prosecutors claim that she invented her injuries, while the defense claimed that the Officer Bavell's record of bad behavior should have been admissible in this court case. Now, McMillan faces seven years in prison for this incident, and I've got to ask you guys in the panel, is this too far? And what do you guys think about this case and the idea that she may be facing seven years in prison for this assault? Um, to, to be fair, she's facing two to seven years, right? And the, man, the mandatory minimum, I believe, in this case is two years. And this is why, in general, I'm against mandatory minimums, because... Even if you find her guilty of assault, like beyond a reasonable doubt that she elbowed this guy in the face, even though it seems very unlikely that you could find her guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, should she really get two to seven years for a crime that very likely could be her just reacting to an officer grabbing her and not knowing who grabbed her? I mean, you have in this case, you have evidence that wasn't admitted, witnesses who weren't um, able to testify on her behalf, and you have a cop with a history of, of corruption, and and for to flush that out a little bit, he was involved in the uh, ticket-fixing scandal for other officers, so he's helping people get off from crimes. So you have all that, and you have the complete over-the-top thing that I'm going to dismiss right now, which is the cop saying that he's super sensitive to light after getting a black eye, like, I've played basketball, I've got elbowed in the face, I've got a black eye, like, that happens. I'm not super sensitive to light and all that, so I think that's nonsense. So, should she have been found guilty or not guilty? I guess that's a question for the jury to decide. I hope she gets a new trial. But two to seven years for what very might likely be an incidental elbow is seems absolutely ridiculous. For, for me, it's, it's a case that... We don't, there's no video footage of, you know, right before the incident, which is an issue. But with the whole he's sensitive to light thing, you know, he seems to be a tough NYPD cop and he's now a bit sensitive to light. You just think that's him trying to get as much sympathy as possible for the situation. And I, I think Sean's right as well is that if kind of the woman, you know, if, if she, it, it depends on the situation. If it's just out of the blue and someone kind of grabbed you on the shoulder and you threw up an elbow in self-defense and that's fine and obviously you know you're in a crowd I don't see why the police officer now of course the police officer isn't claiming that you laid a, a hand on her but you know the police officer shouldn't have been that close to her if he's trying to usher out a group of people kind of out of the area and the fact that you know the the, the and prosecutors are saying oh she's faking her injury you know that could have happened any time wasn't necessarily the cop kind of grabbing her from behind. It's pretty hard to fake a seizure like that. And, you know, when you see the, the seizure video, 
you know, the cops don't really seem to be hoping for a large amount of time. I think this is a case of kind of the cops circling the wagons and trying to defend one of their own. Really. And whilst, you know, you can't necessarily bring that up in, in this unrelated case, he's not a good guy, this cop. Kind of, the previous history shows it, and so I, it, it seems ludicrous that this woman could receive, you know, at a minimum two years. I really do hope that, you know, s something has worked out so she doesn't have to serve that length of time in jail. This officer is being sued by another protester named Austin Guest for allegedly dragging him down the aisle of a bus while intentionally banging his head on each seat. Uh, Bavel also faced another allegation of violence back in 2009 when he had been filmed on video surveillance kicking a man that is, was on the floor that he was arresting. So, look, you know, his record and the NYPD, for the most part, is not actually, they're not known for having a soft touch. Okay, when they arrest people or when they're dealing with the general public. So for this guy's record, I mean, it's suspect. You know, and my kind of question is, you know, this, this guy gets off for allegedly abusing others, but Cecily faces seven years? In my opinion, that's not really even justice. And look, let's, let's be honest, even the jury agrees with that. And they convicted her because, according to the video, she did you know, hit him. She she did elbow him in the eye. I mean, there's more than proof of that. And the video is what did it in. It's good ev evidence. But according to The Guardian, one of the jurors, who did not wish to be named, said that, quote, most, most just wanted her to do probation, maybe some community service. But now what I'm hearing is seven years in jail? That's ludicrous. Even a year in jail is ridiculous. So now you've got the people who convicted her saying that, wait, wait a minute, this, this, you know, this sentence, this possible sentence that she could be getting is absolutely ridiculous. You know, what have we done? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the, what the judge, you know, can do. I'm, I'm, I don't claim to be a legal expert at all. Um, you know, I don't really know how mandatory minimums work, uh, but, um, I mean, even two years, if that's the minimum, that's way too much here. I mean, it, it, even, you don't even have to give the girl probation. Just the fact that you, she has been found guilty of assaulting a police officer, like having that on her record, like that's going to come up in every background check for every job interview she does. Like, for, for what a person of her size can do to a big bad police officer with one hit, like that's enough, uh, that's enough reprimand. And she should well, uh, unless the whole the uh, the groping allegations are true, she should you know face consequences. She hit a cop. You don't hit cops. Uh, again, I, I don't you know if, if what she says is true, then then obviously I don't really stand by that. Um, and that's one thing I don't I don't want to go into the angle. I want to come into this is a little different because there there's so much speculation here, and you know like we've got a court system and a legal system for a reason. Um, and we, we've got evidence of her assaulting a cop. That's what she was charged with. We know she did it. Um, you know, so, like, I don't want to sit here and speculate and speculate and immediately side with the quote-unquote liberal without knowing all the facts. Um, I do think it's very troubling that this police officer has a history of, not only a history of, of acting out, but of pretty much abusing the people he's supposed to be protecting, which is what seems to be the case here. Um, but, again, that, that doesn't, absolutely, you know, guarantee anything in this particular case, uh, although it does seem to stack the deck against him. What I want to, what really strikes me uh, in this, um, no pun intended, is um, the, the, the George Zimmerman defense here. Like, th this is a cop, man. These are supposed to be, you know, New York's finest. They're supposed to go to the bar after their ship and shift and, and gripe about how tough their job is and and you know how much they go through, and this guy got elbowed by a girl, and he is publicly saying like now he's got like traumatic like light, uh, uh, your traumatic sensitivity to light or whatever. Like you got to go back into the locker room with these cops, man. Do you want to be the the I can't look at the light guy? Like what what? I can't imagine this being a good career move for him <laughs> like, or a good social move or anything. Like He's got to be ostracized for this. It's going to be the one example 
of cops not rallying to the defense of one another because nobody wants to rally to the defense of a complete put, if I can, uh, <laughs> you'll pardon my language there. What? In, in actuality, it's actually a great thing for him to do because he can claim an injury and get disability payment and receive more of a portion of his salary when he retires. So, like, he has incentives. Like, uh, Anthony Bologna, Officer Bologna. Right. But he, he has incentives. Remember he has the in guy who was spraying the Occupy protesters who now got $38,000 in uh, damages right. for his <laughs> distress? <laughs> He was psychologically damaged by people in the media talking about his story. But oh, the, fuck off. Yeah, but the That's thing I say. the thing I want to point out about the officer's history being admissible. Now, I'm I'm in favor of certain defendants' history, and the officer's not the defendant, but I'm in favor of certain people's history not being in, admissible into court. Like, um, for instance, we have rape shield laws in this country, so if a woman is raped, you can't use her previous sexual history as not con which doesn't pertain to the uh, the person who is the accuser in the court of law but if this officer was like had accommodations and was like I don't know he pulled people out of rubble in 9/11 and all this bullshit if he was like a decorated officer you better believe they would have used his history in in the uh, in in this particular case and I think that his past history is pretty relevant to this case because he, this guy might be fired, right, in the future. But if he gets a disability and he looks like the victim in this situation, that benefits him. So I think the officer's history should have been admissible in this case, especially since his story seems ridiculous. Like the woman said, hey, are you filming this? Got confirmation that it was being filmed. Lowered, got down, and then powered for like the super elbow from the sky and <laughs> dropped it on this guy's face. Like, that seems absolutely ridiculous, and no video shows her saying what the officer said that she said. You have a grainy video from far away that shows, like, a shape grabbing and her elbowing. Like, that's all you can see. You, you can't hear anything. You don't have context. You can't even hear the officer saying, hey, stop, and then grab her. Like, yeah, so see, you know, that's, that's where I, like, I want to give the officer the benefit of the doubt because I've been to protests and other and big groups, and people treat these cops like crap. They do. They try to provoke these guys. And, but, uh, and, and so, you know, again, I'm not saying she did that. I'm just saying, like, for a cop to say that happened, I find it believable. If nothing else, I guarantee you other people were, and so he was, you know, pushed to the limit. But, hey, you're a police officer. That's what you signed up for. That's not an excuse. But, but then, like, where he completely loses me and makes me want – like, like, I have to, to actively try to, to, to remind myself, hey, you know, innocent until proven guilty and court of laws and I'm not, you know, the judge here, is the fact that, like, then he comes up with the, oh, my eye, oh, the light, well, you know, and he's got this history. That he, so he does that after the fact. He's got this history of, beating up, history of beating up on folks before the fact. Like, I really want to, to not, you know, just do the, the, the Libby McLiberson reaction and, and just come down on this girl's side without any regard for the facts. But, God, this officer's making it really hard. Well, I mean, the thing is, we keep saying, oh, God, we definitely know that she assaulted him. We don't definitely know that she assaulted him. We only know that she struck him with an elbow. If he was the one, and because, you know, we don't have any vid video footage of it, we don't know, and so neither did the jury know. If he had grabbed her from behind first, he was the one who instigated the conflict. Now, okay, she might have been goading him verbally, the crowd might have been goading him verbally. That still doesn't give him the right to kind of physically grab someone as he's trying to kind of move them out of an area. So we don't know that she was the one who actually assaulted him first. Um, well, and really, what, what I wanted, I want to make a clarification because, I, you know, I didn't want to give off that, that, that idea that we're saying that she assaulted him. No. But we do know that her elbow did go right into this dude's eye. And that's what we know. So, so yeah, I mean, that I, clarification. But like, if she was grabbed, and there is, you know, there there is that picture. We showed you that picture of her bruise, right? Being grabbed like that and elbowing somebody—that's a completely human reaction that anybody would make. Anybody? Yeah, to make. totally. And at the end of the day, it's really coming down to kind of the cop saying, "Kind of, she assaulted me," and the woman saying, "He assaulted me." And at the end of the day, with like, I know you shouldn't bring in the kind of the history of the NYPD, but with the whole um, recent debacle of the hashtag my NYPD, 
Now, the NYPD has a history of kind of brutalizing the populace in New York at times. And so what's more likely? A small little woman kind of was just trying to defend herself and have a natural reaction to someone grabbing her from behind, or the NYPD being a little heavy-handed um, in trying to attack someone. It's for me it's it's obvious like it's obvious to me it doesn't bother me. But this guy's a bad cop and he was most likely the one who he did grab her from behind and she just defended herself with an elbow, and there's no way that she should be serving any jail time at all.